Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to McMoran Place Arena, where tonight 275 seniors stand before us, waiting to be the 128th class to graduate from Port Huron High School. A special welcome now goes to their parents, to all the families, and of course to all of our alumni from Port Huron High School, wherever they are tonight. Tonight ends for them a week of activities that seniors always engage in at schools and activities in our community, which included their senior assembly, the prom, baccalaureate, senior luncheon, tonight commencement, and then following this program tonight, their first class reunion project graduation at the YMCA. I know I speak for everyone who has been a part of their life, either at school or in their home and in our community, when we say to them, congratulations, class of 1996, Many things, many people have been involved in the many things that we have put together for this week, and I would like to now thank them for all that they have done. First of all, the three assistants at Port Huron High School, Mr. Dave Appley, Ken Samuelsberger, and Mark Law, for their help and support to this class. The two class sponsors, Mr. Chris White and Mr. Greg Barra. The secretarial staff led by my executive secretary, Betty McBrien. The custodians, the work that they do sometimes goes unnoticed and they do a great job. Dan Bauer leading his men and providing the opportunity for these kids to have not only a sanitary safe school, but also getting all the materials together to be here tonight. I'd like to thank all of them. Of course, the POD teachers today, in this last two weeks, they have really knocked themselves out. Thank you, Al, Jeff, and Ken, and Keith, for your technical assistance. It would not be possible. You were always there, had everything correct. At this time, Sonia White will lead us in the invocation. Would you please bow your heads? Heavenly Father, we just come to you in thanksgiving, Lord. Thank you for getting us this far in our education. And I just pray success on each and every life in this auditorium, Lord. And I just pray that if we have non-believers, that, that all will get to know you, Lord, and know your goodness and your peace. And Lord, I just pray that we all will look to you for guidance and not look into the world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Will the audience please stand for the singing and the playing of the national anthem, which will be performed at this time by Stephanie Brabson, Annette Groves, and Sonia White. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we held As the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so Flag was 
still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of God pray. Thank you, Stephanie, Annette, and Sonia. Will the class of 1996 please be seated. The first class reunion tonight, Project Graduation, is an event that we do not want any senior to miss. It's an opportunity for these seniors to celebrate, reminisce for their very last time. In order to do this, the YMCA has provided, along with all of our members of our community, our staff, and our parents, in providing a safe and secure and wonderful place for tonight's celebration. So immediately following tonight at 10.30, the why all seniors will assemble again for the very last time in this class. This safe and supervised evening is made possible through donations and commitment from everyone in our community and out, sometimes in our state. We have had donations and contributions and gifts given to the class which they will receive tonight which total eight thousand some dollars. And by the way, seniors, before we forget to mention this again, if you have not yet purchased your ticket, you can purchase your tickets tonight at the door at the Y. A special thanks then goes to the organization behind all of this, and it's done by parents. The two co-chair people, Sandy Benito and Eugene Bauman, again with a committee of 20 and 30 parents have put together this program for tonight. I'd like to, at this time, ask the audience to join with me in thanking Sandy and Jean. At this time, I would like to introduce to everyone the superintendent for the Port Huron Area School District, Mr. Larry J. Muller, Sr., who will introduce tonight's speaker, Mr. Muller. Thank you, Dr. Crosby. It's indeed a distinct privilege to be a part of your commencement program and have the opportunity to introduce your commencement speaker. Before I do so, I'd like to just take the privilege of, on behalf of the Board of Education and myself, extending our congratulations best wishes and Godspeed. And as importantly, we'd like to say to the parents, congratulations. Thank you very much for your support and your help. Chances are, if you watch Detroit Metro News at 5 p.m., tonight's guest is no stranger to you. Frank Turner joined WXYZ-TV Channel 7 in October of 1990 as co-anchor of the Action News Weekend. He presently is co-anchor of the 5 p.m. Action News on Channel 7. Prior to coming to Detroit, Mr. Turner worked as <clears throat> general assignment reporter and anchor at WWL-TV in New Orleans and WFLD-TV in Chicago. He has also worked as morning news anchor, producer, general assignment reporter for WTVF-TV in Nashville, he has been political and general assignment reporter for WOWT-TV in Omaha 
and production assistant at WBBM-TV in Chicago. Metro reporting is definitely a part of Mr. Turner's media background. Mr. Turner has received several awards, some of which would include the Associated Press Broadcasters Award, the Radio, Television, and News Director Association Award, the Michelle Clark Fellowship Award, as well as the New York Festival's TV Award. Proud of his ethnic background and media career, Mr. Turner is a member of the National Association of Black Journalists. In addition to that, Mr. Turner graduated <clears throat> from Columbia University with a degree in broadcast journalism. It's indeed a distinct privilege to introduce Mr. Frank Turner. Frank. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've been around. That's either the resume of a well-seasoned journalist or a guy that can't hold a job. Huh? To the class of 1996 of Port Huron High School, I'd like to say congratulations. This is a momentous moment for you, and I certainly hope that you appreciate and enjoy every moment of it. And to the staff and faculty and administration, of Port Huron High School, I'd like to say congratulations to you too, because you have certainly done a fine job in helping them get to this point. And I ran into one of the many proud parents and, and relatives out in the parking lot, and he said, you're not going to talk too long, are you? I thought, well, not now. Actually, when it comes to giving speeches, I like to travel unarmed. That means you're in luck. You didn't want to hear a long, boring speech, and I didn't want to write one. But certainly, this is a very important occasion, and one that makes me a little nervous, because I know that I was called here to try and give you some words of wisdom, some words that might help shape you and guide you, words that might stay with you into the future. And that's a very difficult task. Because I know that most of you probably won't listen any more to me than your little brothers and sisters do to you. And you've tried that. You've tried to tell your siblings who are on their way into high school where the best bathrooms are, where not to be when the principal's coming down the hall. And what do they tell you? <laughs> I can handle it. I know what I'm doing. Funny thing about human beings, at every stage of their life, they always believe that they know everything they need to know at that moment. And then at some point in the future, they always say, boy, I wish I knew then what I know now. My mother was one who could recognize that. She taught uh, English literature to high school students. And she passed away when I was six years old. But by that time, she had managed to give me some insight and some knowledge that at the time I didn't appreciate and didn't understand. But she was prepared for that. She told me three things that she knew I wouldn't understand until I was much older. But when I was older, they would become crystal clear. And so I'm going to try to pass those things on to you with the hope that they'll have the same effect. She told me once that if a person drops a brick on your head, that you're a victim. But at the point where you throw a brick in the air and stand under it, that you're a fool. At six years old, that conjured up quite a few visions. And I run around the neighborhood looking for that fool who might be throwing bricks in the air and waiting for him to fall on his head. But as strange as it may seem, sometimes we victimize ourselves in the same way that others would victimize us. For example, had we been having this gathering some 400 years ago, this entire group would be put to death. The blacks in this auditorium would be killed for committing the capital crime of having learned. And the whites in this room would be killed for being our collaborators. There was a time in this country when learning to read was a capital offense. Why something so heinous? 
Why should getting an education at one time be considered as much of a crime as committing murder? Because in order to enslave, you must take away freedom. And education is true freedom. An educated mind is a free mind. And so those slaves brought to this country risked their lives, and some gave their lives so that they could learn. Because they knew without an education, their minds would be victimized and damaged just as if someone were dropping a brick on their head. So how silly it is today when we have to force some kids to get an education, to do what you have spent the last four years achieving. We have people who throw bricks in the air and stand under them. You are not among them. Another thing she told me, she grabbed my hand one day and she made me feel the palm of my hand with my thumb and she said, you feel how soft your hand is now? When you grow up, I want your hand to be just that soft. So I spent years pouring on lotion. It's not what she was talking about. But that too became crystal clear one day when I was working as a doorman at the Sheraton Plaza Hotel while I was going to college. And I just carried some bags into the lobby from the street. And I looked down at my hands, and they were rough and dry and cracked, and I had calluses beneath my fingers. And at that moment, her message became crystal clear. She had nothing against a hard day's work. She had nothing against manual labor. But what she was trying to tell me is that if you reach a point where you have calloused your hands, chances are you have worked your arms harder than you worked your mind. And that your brain it's just like any other organ, any other muscle in your body. You can strengthen it, you can exercise it, you can expand it. And at that point, I put those bags down and I went back to school full time. The third thing, it took me a while to figure out. She said, do everything you can to keep the foxes out of your hen house. Now we lived in an apartment on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> Up to that moment, I hadn't even imagined we had a hen house, let alone foxes running around. And how was, how was I going to keep the foxes out of my hen house? Your hen house is your world, your life, your home, your friends, your family. Those things that surround you, in which you find comfort, in which you find the strength and the will to go on, the things that most directly affect your life. And the foxes are those people and those things that would come into your hen house and cause trouble. But just like a farmer who hears a noise in the middle of the night in his hen house and he says, who's out there? The fox doesn't say, it's me, the fox. He says, eh, there's nobody here but us chickens because foxes like to be sneaky in what they do. Already there are foxes who are already in your hen house. And those of us up here, we look to you, we see the future, not our own, but we see yours. And quite frankly, we hope you'll do a better job with yours in many ways than we've done with our own. Some of the foxes you might find in your hen house are those members of Congress who would take your tax money and build nuclear power plants to produce energy that electric companies have already told them they won't buy, and then give them special tax breaks and incentives, and most importantly, protection from lawsuits. So that if any of their radiation escapes and harms you, you can't sue them. Well, that seems very foolish, doesn't it? In Hawaii, $20 million has been spent to build a road from a munitions plant that no longer exists to Pearl Harbor. The original idea was that weapons would be ferried to Vietnam. The road is still being built to help a war that's been over for more than 20 years. That's foolish. Those are foxes in your hen house. 
Right now, the Energy Department is building a system in the Nevada desert to house nuclear waste. The Energy Department has already determined that the project will not work. And yet it continues at a cost of $20,000 per day. Those are foxes stealing your eggs out of your hen house. If you have the freedom of knowledge, if you have the strength of mind and the watchful eye over your hen house, perhaps you will go forward from tonight and you'll correct the plagues that we've created. You'll correct the problems that we have failed to solve. And perhaps you'll be responsible for dawning a brighter day for yourselves than we could have ever imagined. Let me just say that we are all so proud of you. We want only the best for you and your future. And we are so happy that you've come this far and very excited about how far you can go. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Turner, Thank you very much for those kind words, for sharing a little bit of your life and your wisdom with this class tonight. At this time, I would like to ask the senior class president, Lori Jemison, to come forward. On behalf of the class of 1996, I would like to present Frank Turner with a small token of our appreciation. Thank well, you. Thank you. Congratulations. Will you open it now, please? <laughs> she wants to know if I'd open it now. She just doesn't know how much I love getting presents. <laughs> now, I don't have to do it neatly, do I? Okay, good. It's like Christmas, you know, when you can just rip it open. Oh, this is beautiful. Wait till you see this. Isn't this fantastic? <laughs> okay. Got to show the folks on this side. Thank you very much, and good luck. Thank you, Lori. <clears throat> the senior class song, Imagine, will be performed by Robert Halley, Tanya Hegberg, Kevin Harvey, Charles McNeely, Michael Smith, and Sarah Withenshaw.
Thank you, Robert, Tanya, Kevin, Charles, Mike, and Sarah. Over the past four years, two gentlemen, two men at Port Huron High School have worked behind the scenes for each and every one of the seniors at, this, at the high school in the class of 96. There have been many accomplishments in this class, almost so many it would be impossible to get into all that tonight. But there are some that I would like to mention which really stand out. First of all, this class won the Spirit Week contest their junior and senior year, and there is no question they have spirit. They won the Spring Spectacular. They were champions their sophomore and junior year over all the other classes. They won the Pep Jug their sophomore year. And among this class, there's many things I said that they have accomplished. Let me just mention a few that they wanted most of all to say tonight. We could talk about hundreds, but this class was the first state boys cross country team to qualify for the state in the school's history. It's the first team to ever have a league championship. The senior dominated football team won its first Macomb Area Conference Championship in the history of Port Huron High School and its first league championship since 1964, 31 years ago. The young ladies in the class this year on the girls basketball team won the district championship. The volleyball team, girls volleyball team, were champs, the first ever league champs. Tennis team, every member of the girls tennis team was an all academic student in the MAC League. And then we, we stopped there because we just haven't got time to go further. These two men I'm mentioning to you, at this time I'd like to ask the class to join with me in asking them to stand and be recognized and thank them right now. First of all, to my right, Mr. Chris White. Mr. White, please stand up. And Mr. Greg Barra, Mr. Barra. Behind every successful school district are the people who make big decisions for the lives of our students in our district. In the Port Huron Area School District, we have seven school board members. Each and every one of those members in, currently are very successful in their own careers, but also spend time volunteering and working as a school board member. Many, many long hours week after week throughout the year, they receive absolutely no compensation. It's all volunteer work. It's done because these people, these men and women, believe in kids, they believe in education, they believe in quality education. With us tonight are two of those seven who will assist us in handing out diplomas, and I would like to recognize them have the audience give them a big round of applause. First of all, this lady has been a parent of three teenagers who graduated from Port Huron High School. She's been on the Board of Education, was involved in Port Huron High School's Parent Advisory Council, has been a part of the lives of all of these students here tonight. Let's recognize Mrs. Carol Cooley. Mrs. Cooley. Thank you. and a Port Huron High School graduate, and the president of the Port Huron Area Board of Education, Mr. James Sharon. Mr. Sharon, please stand. A big red, yeah. 